Ha ha. Nice. Ooh. Oh, power dive. <laughs> oh, they are feisty. This one slammed that Tui Chub fly. Oh, he's nice. Not as big as the other one, but he's plenty big. Oh, what a battler. <laughs> there we go. Well, he smashed that fly. What a beautiful rainbow. Nice fish, 16, 17 inches long probably. Just a beautiful trout. <laughs> I am stoked. Hey folks, Cal Kellogg here. I'm coming to you once again to talk about trolling flies. Now, if you've been watching the channel, you know what this is. This is your standard Arctic Fox trolling fly. It's a streamer fly. It's tied on a super sharp, long shanked, number two hook. This is a killer fly for trophy trout. Put a wiggle disc in front of this, troll it anywhere from one and a half to two miles an hour, and you can catch some very large fish. Um, last October, I got my personal best wild rainbow, a seven pounder on a fly just like this. Um, I've caught a bunch of, you know, anywhere from two and a half to four pound trout on these. Now, having said all that, these flies have a couple shortcomings as all lures do, but I've got a solution for those shortcomings. So the first issue you're going to find, if you're at a lake that has a lot of small to medium sized trout, like French Meadows Reservoir, where your average fish is 14 to 15 inches, what I found is they're very interested in the fly, but you end up, you get a lot of short strikes. Fish come in, they grab at the tail, you'll get a nice wrap on your rod, no hookup. So, takes a good sized trout to inhale that fly. Now, sometimes they're super aggressive and they get it, but uh, at, at, at lakes where the, the fish are a little bit smaller grade, I'm getting about a 50% uh, ratio to, to strikes to hookups, sometimes worse depending on the size of the fish, which can just kind of drive you nuts. Um, the other shortcoming of the full size Arctic Fox streamer, and I haven't experienced this yet, but I know, <coughs> excuse me, I know from being a fly guy for many years that this is a this is a shortcoming. Anytime you're running a long shanked hook, you risk losing fish depending on how the hook is situated in their mouth. Simply because that long rigid shank it offers a ton of leverage. The fish turns that way, your line's over here, that hook is generating a lot of leverage which can pop the hook out. Now, I haven't lost any fish. It's certainly not any big fish on the, the standard issue Arctic Fox fly, but that can happen anytime you're using a long shank hook. So, let me show you a new different fly. It's also offered from Arctic Fox, but it's very different from the traditional uh, streamer tied on a number two long shank hook. Let me grab one. All my stuff's on the ground here. What you're looking at here, and they're offered in many different colors, but I just grabbed a pink one because I thought it was cool. What you're looking at here is an Arctic Fox tube fly. Now, it has a lot of similarities to the standard Arctic Fox fly. You know, primarily, um, is it's made with Arctic Fox fur. But you'll notice that unlike the... Uh, the version that's tied on a hook, this one has a top, you can see the top here, it has a bottom. Well, the tube flies, they're the same all the way around. And there's an important reason for that. As the name, you know, kind of gives away, these flies are tied on a tube and they will slide up and down your leader. They, they don't come with an attached hook, although if you buy a kit of them, they do come with hooks supplied. Now, what kind of hook do you use? Well, the options are kind of unlimited. You could go with a treble. I don't recommend that, but you could. You could go with two small octopus hooks, kokanee style. That will certainly work. Or you can go with a larger single octopus hook, and I really like that. A larger octopus hook, it has a lot of bite, so you get a good hookup, 
but it, it doesn't have a long shank, so the fish doesn't get a lot of leverage to pull the hook loose. And the way you set these flies up gives you a lot of options on where the hook is positioned uh, in relation to the fly. Here's what I've got going on here. I've got a leader set up just like I'd use for a standard Arctic Fox fly. I've got a, a small swivel up top. I've got an action disc. This is 10 pound test fluorocarbon. It's about, I don't know, 36 inches long. So I've got the wiggle disc and swivel on there. We come down to the fly. As I said, the fly is tied on a tube. So I thread the leader, I put it that way. The, wind, the wind's kind of getting at it. You thread the leader through the tube. And then what I did is I put on a small bead to act as a stop. And then I put on a bobber stop and then I snailed on my octopus hook. And in this case, I used a red hook. You could use a red hook. You could use one of those um, black chrome hooks. That really doesn't matter, but I thought a red hook went well with the pink fly. And by the way, I, I think this thing's gonna be a killer on rainbows. So what I did, or what you can do, if, if trout are short striking, if you're getting short, short strikes, you can put that hook, you can use that bobber stop to position that hook right at the back of the fly. So they come in to nip at that, the first thing they're gonna get in their mouth is a hook and it's gonna be fish on, baby. Um, you can shorten that up a little bit, you can get the hook back inside the fly a little bit by just pulling down on that bobber stop just a hair. Just slip it down just a little bit and you'll see that that, that hook gets you know closer to the back of the fly. So I like the ability to be able to position the hook where I want it based on the temperament of the fish, based on what I'm seeing out on the water. And uh, believe me, you get that octopus hook in your mouth, it's got a very short shank, it's got a good bite on it, it's very sharp, you got a very low probability of losing that fish. And he has no leverage, it's got a short, short shank, and the fly, fly slides up and down the leader, so when he's shaking his head and jumping and going crazy, the fly's over here, but the hook's over here. There's no leverage there. If he buries that in his jaw, he's in deep trouble. Um, so that's kind of the story on that. It's, uh, it's an Arctic Fox tube fly. They come in a couple different sizes. This is the large size. Um, Dennis up there at Arctic Fox, he has some small versions. This is the size you want to be running most of the time. Just like the standard Arctic Fox streamers, it has that prominent eye. And these do come in a, a variety of colors. Here's one, here's one that's not rigged on a leader yet. You can see the, uh, you can see the tube there. It's just a, just a simple plastic tube. And uh, I was talking to Dennis and he actually gave me a little background on the history of tube flies. These didn't exist before World War II. And how they kind of sprang to life was over in England, there were a lot of avid fly guys over there. During the war, they couldn't get their long shank hooks. So they were sitting around brainstorming, how are we gonna make those long streamer flies? And someone came up with the idea of, well, let's tie them on a tube and just slide it on our leader and use one of our standard hooks. And the tube fly came to life. Well, Dennis has taken it to a whole new level with that super lively Arctic fox fur. And uh, as I was saying, they come in a variety of colors. You know, all the all the standard bright colors and bait fish colors. Here's a couple tube flies in you know shad or smelt pattern stuff like that. And uh, and uh, as with my other tube or my other Arctic fox flies, I like to pre-tie them on leaders, and uh, I just keep them on these foam cards. Tie them all about the same. You got your action discs back there. And I'll, I'll either run these off a standard rod with maybe a split shot if I'm fishing right below the surface. But the way I really like to run them is off one of my hybrid lead core rigs. That way I can work, you know, from, from zero to 30 feet deep and a super efficient way to fish. And uh, hey, seeing's believing. I've caught some monster fish on Arctic Fox flies. And uh, I haven't fished the tube flies a whole lot. But it's coming, baby. I'm gonna be at Elmanor this fall. I just bought a new, uh, a new SUV, so I got a place to sleep. I got some four-wheel drive action going on, so I'm not worried about snow anymore. So I'm gonna be at Elmanor and Davis and all those awesome spots. And you can better believe I'm gonna be trolling 
tube flies, standard flies, and anything else that it takes to get hit from some big old trout this fall. Anyway, that's it. If you're if you're a fly junkie like me and you don't have some tube flies, you might want to check them out. It just adds a whole new dimension to fly trolling. And uh, what am I going to be talking next in the, in the fly trolling arena? Well, I've got some magnum arctic fox flies some trophy flies but we'll talk about those later anyway thanks for all the support folks i'm signing off i got some chores to do actually i'm gonna go do a bunch of push-ups here so anyway you have a great rest of your day please hit the subscribe button if you haven't and i really want to thank you for all the support you've been giving the channel here over over the last several years anyway i'm having a blast i love doing video and i hope you guys enjoy watching them that's it for now i'll catch you later this is cal kellogg and i'm signing off